Hello, my name is Ben, the Provide2 product owner here at Bloom. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the service delivery plan known as the SDP, which will act as the framework through which your contract is going to be managed. First up, I'll be showing suppliers how to submit their progress update before showing the contract owner how they can approve an update, which will go on to trigger the automated invoicing process. Okay, first for suppliers who have a live project and SDP within Provide2, as you approach a milestone within the project, you're going to receive a notification via email alerting you to the fact there is a service update due. At any time as well, you can access those actions within your dashboard. So if you log in and look at the supplier line, the in progress is going to show you all of the actions currently outstanding for you as a supplier across all contracts. If you click in, you're going to see a list of all of those actions. You can filter or you can search. I know that I am going to be submitting an update for Project 700 for the March milestone. So I'm going to find that in my list and click in. Here I can see further details. I can see any messages that have been sent between the buyer and ourselves. The really important bit here is the collaboration area. So this is where the questions for the update are housed um, and that's where we're going to update them. So I can attach anything that I need to. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to edit and now I can start filling in those questions. So all of those need to be completed in order for an update to be pushed to the buyer. So they must represent exactly where we are with our project currently. And obviously they're going to be more detailed for a real project. So I'm just going to go through and update these. I do confirm that I've delivered all the outcomes detailed in the work order. As I reach this section under the confirmations, it's going to ask me about the invoicing. So this is really important. So if I want to invoice for the full value agreed for the reporting period or the payment schedule, I'm going to select yes. And you can see the amount is detailed below. So that is the total amount <clears throat> within the, the payment schedule. Or if I'm not invoicing for that full amount, so I've only partially completed work or used a set number of days. I'm going to select no. And in here, I can update the amount I'm going to ask uh, to invoice for. Okay, so that's really important. And that's going to push through to the buyer for their approval. So that's the amount that they're going to see there. I can also add any expenses that I may have accrued um, and attach any copies of receipts as well. I haven't for this project. And the final bit there is the service delivery plan, the final element. So if we do have a call off, uh, we can select that this is going to be the last update. Uh, for me, it's not. So I'm going to select no. And I'm going to scroll back up to the top where I can save. So once I've saved, I can review my answers and just make sure everything is accurate and truly represents where we are with the project. And if I'm happy, I can now complete that action. So it's really important that we go back to the top and complete the action. That is going to push it through to the buyer for their approval. It's going to ask me that twice. And once done, that has now pinged through to the buyer. They will have received a notification and they're going to go in and approve or potentially reject my update. Customers, your supplier has uh, sent through an update action. This is going to ping an email notification to the contract owner and to anyone else within the project team, alerting them to the fact that there's one there to go in and review. You can either click through from that email or you can log into your main dashboard. Here we're going to go down to supplier development, supplier plans, and my supplier actions. So here we see a full list of the supplier actions, both completed and in progress. The action will be in the email. The one that they've sent through was the supplier submission for March 2020. And this is going to show as completed as it was updated by the supplier. OK, so this is the review point. So we're going to click in. In the collaboration area, again, we're going to see the questions that the supplier has answered based on the update. And here we want to review the questions to make sure they are an accurate reflection of where the project is. Really important here is to look at the invoice value. Okay, so they may have selected full invoice amount for that payment schedule. Make sure you're happy with that. If not, they're going to have updated the invoice amount that they are pushing through. So you want to check that and make sure you're happy. Having reviewed those questions, 
if you are happy, we're going to then go back to our list. And here we need to find the customer approval that matches to that milestone to that date. So it was the March 2020 supplier submission. I'm now going to find the March 2020 customer approval for the same project, Project 700. In here, we're going to click in. And here we have some checking questions before we are going to submit the approval. So we're going to edit the values. And there's three questions here around confirmation. There's a safeguard. So first, to confirm you accept the delivery and associated cost reported by the supplier. Second, to confirm that you agree with the supplier service delivery plan. And finally, just selecting yes to confirm that you understand that the response is going to essentially trigger the invoicing process. You're also asked if you are not happy with the service delivery plan, can you confirm that you have restarted the relevant service delivery plan action? And I'll show you that in a separate video. For an approval, you're just going to have to click NA in there. And the next ones are related to project performance. So give an update of how you're finding current delivery of the project. This supply is good. And any Bloom performance rating. So there's a question there about recommending Bloom to specialist uh, service providers and any further comments. So again, I can save that by scrolling to the top. I can review my answers to make sure I'm happy. Once I'm happy, I'm then going to complete that action. Now it's really important here. As soon as I complete that action, if it is an approval, that is then going to trigger the invoice process and the automated invoicing process is going to start, ultimately leading to payment to the supplier. So making sure I'm happy, again, complete that action. It's going to ask me to complete that twice. And now that I've sent that, it's going to ping and it's going to start the invoicing process. That is the end of today's video. So thank you very much for your time and attention. There will be some further SDP videos on what happens when a buyer rejects a service update. In the meantime, if you want to contact us, do drop us an email on hello at bloom.services, call on 020 3948 9400 or visit our website for further information. Thank you very much.